For several hundred years until 1850, life expectancy was 42 years and world population was just 1.2 billion. Today we expect to live twice as long. How did this happen? The answer lies in a series of remarkable breakthroughs in medicine, agriculture and medical technology, which started in 1850. During the first 50 years, we saw the introduction of pasteurization and anesthesia. There were huge drives towards public hygiene and sanitation. This was followed by the Green Revolution, synthetic fertilizers and the discovery of antibiotics, all of which have saved billions of lives since they were introduced. By 1950, life expectancy had increased to 69 and world population more than doubled to 2.6 billion. Then came the era of Big Pharma, the development of vaccines together with antibiotics eradicated the majority of infectious diseases. This was followed by the introduction of radiology, advanced surgical techniques and organ transplants. Now with a deeper understanding of the human genome, progress is continuing at a fast pace, such as research into cell immunotherapy, where T cells are extracted from a patient's blood re-engineered in an external environment and infused back intravenously. Life expectancy has increased to 82 and we are now 7.8 billion people. It seems 100 is not so far away. Much of what killed us in the past can now be treated with vaccines, antibiotics, advancements in medicine and medical technology. <laughs> Child mortality compared to 1850 has fallen tenfold. So what kills us now? In 1850, most of the top 10 killers were infectious diseases and viruses. But these rankings have been changing rapidly over time. Today, the biggest killers are heart disease, cancer, stroke and lung infections, which account for more than 60% of deaths worldwide. During the last 20 years, as the world population grew from 5.3 billion to 7.8 billion today, the population of those above 50 doubled from 900 million to 1.8 billion. This is mainly because we are living longer. During this same period, the prevalence of cancer has been growing just as rapidly, doubling in the 50 to 69 age band. In this way, mirroring the increase in population in this age band. This data shows two important trends. One, there is a clear relationship between the risk of getting cancer and living longer, especially after we cross the age of 50. Two, there has yet not been meaningful improvement in the prevention of cancer. Treatment has improved a lot, yes, but has prevention Certainly, lung cancer has reduced in a few countries due to reduction in smoking. And there has been success in prevention of cervical cancer with the HPV vaccine. However, at an overall global level, these impacts are still small. But what is cancer? Why is it so hard to cure? Why is it growing? How do we get it? How does it kill? Let's look at a cell on the epithelial tissue of a prostate gland. The length of DNA within each cell is about six foot. DNA molecules are shaped in the form of a double helix joined by base pairs. During the cell replication process, errors can occur in DNA structures as daughter cells are formed. For example, a part of the helix may break or there may be a break in the base pairs or strands which join the two helixes. These errors are called mutations. Not all mutations are harmful. Mutations can accumulate over time.
For example, a cell may first acquire one or two harmful mutations. Then over time it may acquire another harmful mutation, and so on. Once a cell acquires six to seven harmful mutations, it no longer understands its instructions and grows out of control, dividing at higher rates than normal cells. This leads to the onset of cancer. Because it takes time to accumulate mutations, the longer we live, the higher the chance of getting cancer. This is why cancer can said to be the other side of longevity. The probability of surviving for five years or longer after the onset of cancer continues to improve, though much depends on the stage of diagnosis and type of cancer. The chance of getting cancer during your lifetime is now 40% to 50%. Once a major cancer has onset, life is overtaken by hospitals and years of treatment. Depending on the cancer and stage of diagnosis, the prognosis for living five to 10 years or even longer continues to increase with medical advancements. However, the chances of getting back to a normal working life and continuing to earn the same level of income as before are bleak. Medical bills are generally reimbursed by health insurance, depending on the country you live in and the type of insurance you have. However, health insurance does not pay the mortgage or replace the income stream to meet ongoing needs of family and complete retirement goals. It is important to discuss with your financial planner the risks you may be exposed to if cancer comes knocking at the door. Can mutations be inherited? What about smoking? Do mutations occur by chance? How does cancer grow? How does it kill? Watch the next video, Genesis and Growth of Cancer, to find out.